I'm so happy to be able to be walking out here with you on this beautiful, gorgeous day. It is about 55 degrees right now, and it has been so cold here. But this warm day will quickly fade away, and the winter weather is going to sweep back through and bring us... I think ugly winter mix this week so we're kind of preparing for that but right now I'm enjoying the sunshine I've got a lot of great content or in my eyes great content for you guys this week that I'm excited to share with you but today today is for our spiritual preparedness today I want to share something with you that is personal to me but it blessed me and I feel like it's what I need to share with you I was actually standing in this very spot when I got this word. The word was repurpose. It was a word that my heart needed to hear from the Lord. You know in those weird times when we're just kind of like, blah, I, I don't really know if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing or I, I don't know where you want me to go from here. I was kind of in that moment because so much in our life has changed. It has changed so much over the past year, probably past two years if I'm really being honest. So when the Lord said to me, repurpose, I was like, oh Jesus, I needed that word today, right now. So I stood in this spot and I just wept and I praised him and I wept and I praised him. So I guess it would be helpful if I actually told you what repurposed mean, like the definition. Adapt in a different place. Wow. Adapt in a different place. And for us, that doesn't literally mean picking up and moving to a new place and adapting. That just means a new place maybe in our life, um, maybe a new place in our spiritual life. Even on here, the content that is flowing from us has changed a little bit. So while it may not all make sense all the time, God certainly has a plan. And that I do trust. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the word right now. And it's going to come from Acts 9. And it was Saul's transformation. If you guys know, he went from Saul to Paul. And I love this story because it fits so perfectly into this word repurpose. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on the mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground but then he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. So Saul was literally set out to destroy the followers of the way, the followers of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one that has set our souls and our spirits free. But that encounter with Jesus transformed him, repurposed him, back to God's purpose and design for his life. So how encouraging is it to know that no matter how much we stray, even if we don't mean to, God will get us back on track. He will repurpose us. So sometimes when we're going through this adapting process, it is very uncomfortable, right? The transition, the transformation is very uncomfortable, but the process is so necessary. If we stay where we are, we'll become stagnant and we get comfortable and set in our ways. And God is trying to keep us moving and going forward and growing. And a lot of the times we give him pushback. So I had been questioning him many times in my personal prayers about, Lord, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Lord, do you want us to live a prepared life? Lord, 
do you even want me to be sharing this stuff online? And then he spoke that word to me and it all makes sense in my heart. If you've ever gotten a word from the Lord, a personal word, something just between you and him, you know it and it's undeniable and it's something that you can't shake. It's something that you can't forget and it puts a new burning, a new passion, a new fire inside of you. So we will carry on. We will continue to make prepared living videos. We will continue to live this prepared living life. It is something that Patrick and I both love to do together and I believe as husband and wife and as a family, that is so important. We aren't supposed to be trying to do God's work separate, resenting one another because one's doing it and the other's not. And as a mama and a Grammy, my babies are priority. And the Lord has shown me that I am discipling, I'm discipling them. So in this moment, in this season, if you feel like you're not doing enough or anything at all, look at those small things in your life. Are you faithful in those areas? Are you faithful to your husband? Are you faithful to your family or your grandchildren to disciple them, to speak about the Lord to them, to teach them to pray? The Lord has really shown me those are big things. And just because we're not out doing these big ministries in this season, doesn't mean that I'm not doing what he's asking me to do right where I am and it is hard to adapt but my heart is full of joy and I'm happy where I am and he speaks to me and I know he's with me so right now if you're kind of where I'm at in your walk with the Lord or maybe you haven't even started you could start right now no moments too late the Lord can repurpose you and set you on track for his purpose and his destiny for your life. I hope today's word blessed you and encouraged you. And as Patrick has said, pray for the best and prep for the worst. Until next time, God bless. You guys have an amazing day.